But just on John Kelly speaking out, General Kelly, hearing from him, obviously, as you know, is very rare to you and to the Times. Uh, what do you make of what he had to say to you? Well, he, he, we talked about the, the Hitler issue most of all because I've been very interested in Donald Trump's belief system as it pertains to authoritarian leaders. We've never had a president uh, of the United States or a major party candidate, I believe, uh, who has expressed such admiration for the leadership style of, of Adolf Hitler. And uh, I think among the many things that John Kelly was shocked at when he worked in the White House, I think this is probably the, the most shocking for him, the idea that um, Donald Trump would regularly tell him and others how much he admired Hitler. And very specifically, he, John Kelly heard Donald Trump say repeatedly, and others have heard him say, that he admired aspects of uh, Hitler's reign, uh, and that he particularly admired the way that German generals were obedient to, to Hitler. Remember, Donald Trump, throughout the, his presidency, was um, frustrated by the generals, or my generals, as he called them, both people in the Pentagon and both people who were retired who worked in, in the White House, because they wouldn't sort of mindlessly listen to him or follow his orders. That's not the way it works in a democracy, obviously, um, when there's an order that uh, is illegal or immoral. Uh, and he, he said to John Kelly, look, I, I, I want generals who are obedient, like the German generals, and Kelly would push back, as, as, you, uh, as you showed. Um, and, and, and Kelly would actually push back and say, you know, Hitler's generals spent a lot of time trying to kill him. And yeah. Donald Trump would say, no, 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 that's not true. I mean, we all know it's true. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the history of, of, of Hitler's rule. There were constant attempts on Hitler's life by generals and other officers. There's even a Tom Cruise movie about it, in case you don't read books. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, this was, this was, I think, among the things that shocked Kelly and, and other officials the most. Because it's very un-American, obviously, to express... Um, to express uh, admiration for the the leadership style of a of a the world's foremost fascist. Well, and just the idea of in your reporting where it, John Kelly was having to like explain it to yeah. to Trump and to say that of course Trump famously quoted as saying he knows more uh, than his generals did. And there's part uh, of General Kelly talking about this, about the comments that we've heard from Donald Trump lately. This is not just something that happened in term one of Donald Trump. We're now hearing him talking about using the U.S. military to go after what he refers to as enemies from within. I mean, he's name-dropped Democrats when he's had those conversations. There's part of this interview with General Kelly with The New York Times uh, about why he's speaking out now. I, I just want people to, to listen to, to what he said to the New York Times about this. Unless you're someone like me or Mattis or, you know, people like that that retired from the military or left the military, like, like Mark Esper or, uh, or Mike Pompeo, and then go into a political job, um, whether it's elected or, or, or assigned by the White House, uh, it's a little bit different because you're then involved in it. But um, for the most part, you just, and that's why I'm, I'm so hesitant to talk. It's certainly never to tell or recommend to an American who they should vote for because now that I'm out of the political job, I'm back to being pretty much a uh, retired, retired military officer who should not get too involved in this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, until the former president started talking about this, and this, this goes back to my, when I was in the White House, for that matter, DHS, I was, uh, uh, you know, originally, the conversation would be, uh, you know, Mr. President, that's outside your authority, or, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's a routine use, you really don't want to do that inside the United States. Um, but now that he's talking about it as I'm going to do it is, uh, is, again, it's disturbing. Jeffrey, did that have a role in, in why John Kelly went on the record with you about, about the military and Trump's thoughts on, on how it should work for him? Uh, I think John Kelly has been concerned about this for uh, a long time. We're obviously closer to the election. And I think a lot of 
people in John Kelly's position, there are a lot of generals, uh, you know, who are, are discussed in my story. A lot of them are torn because, uh, on the one hand, it's a very, very strong tradition in the U.S. military to stay apolitical, to not be involved in politics and not endorsed. One of the reasons the military is so highly respected in America compared to other institutions is because of this. Um, on the other hand, I think generals like, former generals like Kelly, Milley, Mattis, and there's a whole bunch of others uh, who have seen him up close, who've seen Trump up close, have spotted real authoritarian tendencies and a real desire. I mean, you remember in 2020 and the George Floyd uh, disturbances, uh, Donald Trump said to the defense secretary at the time, uh, Mark Esper, that why can't you just shoot these demonstrators? Why can't you just shoot them in the legs? Um, he has expressed a desire over and over again to various officials um, that U.S. troops be used to suppress uh, Americans demonstrating against policies that that he happens to uh, yeah. you know support. Um, so I I would say that people like John Kelly uh, have are in a tough spot. They don't want to politicize entirely, but they're also um, I mean to put it plainly, I think they're scared. I think they're scared of what a second Donald Trump term would look like because they saw the first. Yeah, the people who saw it firsthand. And, yeah. you know, the other people who saw it firsthand, and this is the other concern we've heard from, from some of these people, is they're worried about who would staff a second Trump term. And, and when right. you, the disturbing story that you open up with about Vanessa Guillen and, and what her family's gone through, you know, I, I should note Mark Meadows, who was there, that you report was given this order, don't pay it. He, he claims that's not true. He said in a statement mm -hmm. tonight that Trump was nothing but kind, gracious, and wanted to make sure they did right by her family. Cash mm -hmm. Patel, who was also there, said, of course, President Trump didn't say that. He ensured that this victim received full military honors. Her sister mm -hmm. tweeted at you saying that she felt her sister's death was being exploited. Just given what you heard from your sources, what do you make of those denials? Um, I don't make much of them at all. The, 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 the sister wasn't in the meeting. Uh, the lawyer for the family wasn't in the meeting. Mark Meadows was in the meeting. Cash Patel was in the meeting. A whole bunch of other senior officials were in the meeting. I have sources who are sitting in that meeting. I have contemporaneous notes taken by participants in that meeting that uh, describe exactly what I described in the story. We've seen this pattern again and again and again. They deny, 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 and then it comes out as true. This is the same thing that happened with the previous iteration of this, and John Kelly confirmed this to, uh, to both the New York Times and to me today, uh, the quote-unquote suckers and losers issue, Donald Trump calling veterans and the war dead suckers and losers. They denied and denied and denied, and we have multiple witnesses. John Kelly told me on the record that, that he and many other people in the White House heard Donald Trump constantly refer to the war dead, American war dead, uh, as suckers and losers. We, we, we know that he believes that people who serve the country uh, are, are losers and suckers. He said it in multiple ways, multiple times. And this, of course, all starts with uh, his putting down, his, his denigration of John McCain and George H.W. Bush, both Navy pilots uh, who were shot down in enemy action and Donald Trump putting down their experiences constantly. He's done that on the record, uh, but but these other these other issues, obviously, these are things that he said as part of his regular discourse. So it's not surprising yeah. that Mark Meadows is going to deny it. Um, but the denial doesn't hold weight. I have contemporaneous sources, contemporaneous notes from that meeting. Um, he said it. It yeah. also tracks with everything that we know about the way he speaks.